This is Matt Plyle from the Southwest Center of Microsystems Education. I'm going to be talking about units of weights and measures. So, uh, a unit of measurement is a standardized quantity of physical property. Length, weight, time, temperature are some examples. Some of the first units of measurement were units of length, many of which were derived from the length of a body part. Throughout history, the standards for units and weights and measures have continued to change. This has created the need for continuous conversion from one standard to another, from one unit to another. Today, there's a global standard. It's called the International System of Units, or SI units for short, and it's what we commonly refer to as the metric system. So in this graphic, you can see that um, we're comparing three different units of measure for temperature. On the left side is the Kelvin scale. Now the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale have the same um, spacing to them. What I mean by that is if you go up 20 degrees on the Kelvin scale, it's like going up 20 degrees on the Celsius scale. The Fahrenheit scale, on the other hand, is a, is a completely different scale and, you, and there is a formula you can use to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now to convert from um, Kelvin to Celsius, all you have to do is subtract 273 degrees. So at 100 degrees Celsius, which happens to be where water boils at um, sea level and at standard pressure, um, that 100 degrees in Celsius is equivalent to saying it's 373 degrees Kelvin. You may ask, well, why do you have two scales with the same um, distances or the same amounts between each unit? Um, they're effectively the same type of scale, they're just shifted by 273 degrees. The reason is, is that the Kelvin scale, when you get to absolute zero, that's when all uh, molecular motion stops. It's as cold as you can get. You can't get colder than zero. So zero on the Kelvin scale really means zero. Zero on the Celsius scale, on the other hand, means that you're at the temperature where water freezes and 100 degrees Celsius is where water boils. So the Celsius scale was actually the first scale developed. The Kelvin scale was developed later. So the objectives of this unit is to um, be able to state two problems with the systems of weights and measures which led to the development of the metric system. So basically, why do we have a metric system? Um, discuss the importance of the international standardized system of weights and measures and list at least seven basic um, uh, SI units of physical quantities. Okay, so if you go back in time and you look at um, distances, the first, uh, one of the first known um, units, standardized units, was called the cubit. And you see a picture of it here. Now the cubit was defined as being 28 digits um, long, so if you had your hand you could come up with something that represents a cubit um, by putting your finger down 28 times and making a, a standardized ruler out of that, and then you could use that ruler to measure distances such as amount of land or amount of um, wheat, um, you know, that's baled or, or whatever. So this unit of measure was actually developed in Egypt about 3000 BC. Now the Egyptians did a lot of building, they had a very sophisticated agriculture system, so they needed ways of measuring things. So they were driven to create standardized measurement units. Um, one of the um, these units, like I said, is the cubit. Its length was the um, length from the person's arm from the elbow to the fingertips which is about 52 um, units it's also about 28 digits uh, grains of wheat and barley were used for weight measurements over the centuries the original units of weights and measures were altered by different civilizations the original royal Egyptian cubit was divided into 28 digits later it became 24 the Roman cubit was 16 palm widths, um, so it was probably a little bit longer. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, we went to 24 digits, and now on our rulers, or on our English system rulers, we have 12 um, inches, which may be pretty close to 12 digits wide. 
Um, as commerce and trade spread across different countries, it became necessary to be more consistent. So if you're trading with a neighboring country, you want to be able to speak the same language with respect to units. So trade would be fair and equitable. Materials such as stone and metal were used to produce exact units of weight and length, creating a standard for trade for the trade market. Much larger quantities such as the yard, mile, or pound were based on multiples of these smaller units. So, you know, um, a pound were so many ounces, um, a mile is so many feet or yards, and um, a yard is so many feet, so many inches, those sorts of things. Okay, the English units of measure um, were developed and standardized during the Roman Empire. The system divided both the foot and the pound into 12 equal parts. The Romans established the pace uh, equal to 5 feet and a mile equal to a thousand paces or 5,000 feet. In 1595 the Roman mile was changed from 5,000 feet to 5,280 feet. Both the imperial system used in the United Kingdom and the U.S. system were derived from English units of weights and measure. So I like the Romans better. They tried to round things off to the nearest thousand, but uh, it's really hard to remember there's 5,280 feet in a mile. And I think there's 1,700 and something yards in a, in a mile. Okay, systems of U.S. and the uh, U.K. Well, throughout the years, um, each country, the U.S. and the United Kingdom, for example, were working independently. They continued to develop their own standards for weights and measures. So what happens? Well, there's a difference between the two systems. For example, the U.S. pint is 16 ounces and the U.K. pint is 20 ounces. So if you ask for a pint of beer in the United Kingdom, you will get 4 ounces more than if you ask for a pint in the United States, for example. Um, so, what drove us to start out the metric system? Well, in 1790, the French Academy of Sciences was charged by the National Assembly of France to deduce an invariable standard for all of the measurements and all of the weights. The outcome was the uh, metric system. Metric system attempted to reduce the existing conflicting and confusing units of measurement to a few fundamental units. Common multipliers of powers of 10 were developed to enable each unit to be expressed in larger and smaller quantities. It's a lot easier to have multiples of 10 than multiples of 3 or multiples of 12. Because in our base 10 numbering system, if you do th measurements in multiples of 10, you can just move the decimal point several places to go from, say, meters to centimeters. So the Treaty of the Meter. Okay, what was that all about? Well, in Paris, on May 20th, 1875, there was an agreement referred to as the Treaty of the Meter, and it was signed by 17 nations. 51 nations have since signed this treaty, including all the major industrialized countries, as well as the United States. Two of the major outcomes of the Treaty of the Meter were the formation of, of the General Conference on Weights and Measures, which is called the CGPM, an intergovernmental treaty organization, and the creation of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. And this is really important when it comes to trade. If I'm going to sell a ton of um, rice to the United States, I better use a definition that my uh, trading partner understands. And if I'm going to sell a ton of, of corn from the U.S. to, say, Germany for cattle feed, that ton better not be different ton than what they're used to getting. So if everybody agrees on what a ton is, then you can trade agricultural products and know exactly what you're going to get. You have a better expectation. And, and it keeps the confusion down. So the international system of units was de developed uh, at a conference, the ninth conference in 1948. Um, they were instructed to conduct an international measurement requirements study 
of the scientific, technical, and educational communities. The data from this study led to the adoption of the metric system as the international systems of units, or Système International de Unités. And I'm sorry if I butchered the French there. Um, I'm sure most of you can pronounce that better. We refer to it as SI. So it's the System International Units. And um, at the 11th CPG conference in 1960, that was done.